We're back here. We're back here with the famous and popular Dr. Phil. Um, now, uh, today, Monday, right. uh, the beginning of your 15th season, and you are starting off with a six a part or a three part series? Three part series. Three part yeah. series um, revisiting uh, the tragic case of John Benet Ramsey. This is the 20th anniversary, if you can believe it, since this child was tragically murdered in her home, John Benet Ramsey. And in the last 20 years, we call it a cold case, but it's never gotten cold. The internet has just been a buzz with this, and people have never let this go. And in the last 20 years, there is one missing link. There was one person known to be in that house the night of that murder that in 20 years has never spoken. That's the missing link, and that's the brother, Burke Ramsey. And he has never spoken in 20 years until now. And I'm interviewing him on the show that was on today, on tomorrow, and then next Monday. It's the first time he's spoken in 20 years. And there were three tapes of him, and then two interrogation tapes, and one with a psychologist at the time. And those tapes disappeared as well and have been missing for the last 18, 20 years. And we also have those tapes. And we're going to look at those tapes. I'm going to look at those tapes with him, watching him watch himself at the time his little sister was murdered. And we're going to talk about what happened. After 20 years, I can't remember, did it ever go to trial? No. She was, she was murdered uh, in her home. They found her the morning after Christmas. And that there was a three and a half page ransom note left on the stairs. Mm -hmm but she was in the house. They found her in the house the next morning. She was found by her father. Ransom note, but yet they didn't take the child. And the FBI say it's the longest ransom note they have ever had in history, and it was written on stationery that was in the house before. They didn't bring it with them. You worked in the court system for many years, helping people put together juries. Do you have faith in our criminal justice system, or do you believe it can be manipulated to win rather than bring justice? Because a lot of people believe well, that of our court system now. Well, I think the collective IQ of any jury is at least 1,200. You put 12 people in there with an average IQ, they got a collective I IQ of 1,200, and I think they tend to get it right. And when I worked in there, I work to help people tell the truth effectively. Mm -hmm. And there's a big difference between telling the truth and telling the truth effectively. Mm -hmm. And I have Telling the truth effectively is telling a story. Well, yeah. Telling the truth is merely factual. Telling the truth effectively is creating a narrative that the audience will, or the audience being the jury, will come along with. Yeah, you got to know who's on your jury. You got to know how they listen, what matters to them. You got to understand what their values are. And you got to frame your case up in a way they can understand and relate to. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. I'm not a lawyer. I don't mean to brag, but I'm not. Mm -hmm. I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> I worked on. The, the psychological aspects of the story, getting it across. If you were helping someone put together a jury for something like something tragic like the Jean Benet Ramsey case, who would you say they should have on that jury? You have to understand who's on your jury at a core value level. Look, common sense is not common, it's just not common enough anymore. I think people. What does that mean? Because that sounds. <laughs> Because that sounds super cool and folksy with a southern accent, but you can make anything. I, I would believe anything you say because of the mustache and the yeah. southern accent. Yeah. I got to tell you. That's good to know. <laughs> In case you want to sell me yeah, any real estate. Yeah, yeah. No, listen, think about this. If I've spent my whole life figuring out why people do what they do and don't do what they don't do, think about that. If you know why people do what they do mm -hmm. and don't do what they don't do, you have a huge leg up in life. And for example, when I look at a jury, I don't care where they work. I don't care what church they go to. I want to know what their core values are. There are certain core values that if people embrace that and you know that about them, you can know how to try your case. Core value, you don't reward bad behavior. Core value, right? That, I mean, I don't care if you're talking about the biggest corporation in the world or a two-year-old throwing a tantrum in the, in the aisle at the grocery store. You don't reward bad behavior, right? <laughs> yeah, but is that might, a core value? It is a core value. It is a core value. 
But it can be appealing. It can be appealing because, de you know, depending on what your political position is, one side or the other in this election believes that the other candidate is being rewarded for bad behavior. People think that Hillary's being rewarded for her bad behavior. People know that Trump is being rewarded for his bad behavior. And they like it. Yeah. Poor value. We, we got to go, and I know you got to go too. Okay. Dr. Phil, thank you so much you for being bet. here. Good to see you. Dr. Phil is on TV all the time. Check your local internet. Shall we go together? <laughs>